All right. Hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the computer, the fans whirring, right? It's, like, it's trying to cool down this laptop before I even get started because it knows that we're going to be looking at 10 points new 515 feet per second crossbow among other crossbows in this video. And it knows that it's going to be a pretty, pretty intensive thing. So it's getting ready. All right, so we are gonna go to the 10 Point Crossbow Technologies webpage, and it brings us right up here with this exciting announcement from 10 Point for 2024, Twin Risers Zero Track Barrel, a new era. A new era indeed. This is pretty exciting stuff because it is offering some new technology. Or is it? <laughs> the reason I say it that way is they are combining some other technology, as we'll see. I've taken a little bit of a look at this. Obviously, I haven't shot this thing, but it is nonetheless a significant announcement for 2024 to kick off the year, the new year of crossbows. I try to do this here on Death by Bungie every year, look at new crossbows. Here we have the front end. We're looking at this new offering from 10 Point, which we are told shoots 515 feet per second. That is a mean looking machine. 30 years of crossbow precision. Good for you, 10 Point. That's exciting stuff. 30 years in the business. That is a long standing, tried, true, and tested brand now, isn't it? And 10 Point's really been the leader over those years in terms of technology, speed. They are also the company that has pretty diverse offerings now. They actually have some cheaper crossbows that are coming out, more affordable, let's say, that we can uh, talk about this year as well. So there's some, some exciting stuff coming by way of 10 Point this year. We scroll down, the first thing we see here, we have the TRX515. That is the new exciting offering. Look at this crossbow right out of the gate. The first thing we notice, that I notice, that I see on this crossbow that's pretty exciting to me, is the reverse limb, reverse draw technology. Ooh, right, I did a video about that, a few videos actually, over the years, always been impressed with that because of the Scorpid technology. I'm just really interested in different crossbows and different technology, right? Not the beat a dead horse here, but the OB, the original bungee oh, hanging on the wall here, right? That Excalibur Axion from 2010. I hunted with that for more than a decade at 305 feet per second and below, right? So I have a lot of experience with that old slow crossbow, but I'm very excited about what newer technology offers, right? My last video, I talked about can crossbows be too powerful? My thinking is right now, a crossbow that shoots a 400 grain arrow at 400 feet per second or so, that's kind of the sweet spot for modern crossbows. It really is. To me, that's the definition, in fact, of a modern crossbow. Is It's part of the definition, one that can shoot that speed with that weight of an arrow. 350 and below, something below the in the 350, like that's, that's an old speed, right? If you're 440, 450 and above, you're now into those ultra modern speeds, which presents a whole different host of problems. Slower than the, you know, in the older speeds, you got problems, deer duck in the string, penetration, stuff like that. If you're in the mo ultra modern, you got new problems, right? Too much penetration, can't get a target, can't test it at 20 yards, you know, can't shoot in the backyard, or blah, blah, blah. So right now, the sweet spot for me is that 400 feet per second. I'm not saying that's what you should hunt with at all, right? I'm saying that's where I'm at in my crossbow journey. That's all I'm saying. I really like the speed of 515. And I guess the point of that last video, and as we look at this, I want to be clear that for me, 515 is exciting because I think in five years or 10 years, we'll be talking about that being the modern speed. We definitely will. Pretty much all the manufacturers by that time will be shooting something in the 500s, right? Around 500 feet per second. Instead of 400 feet per second with a 400 grain arrow, we might be talking about 500 feet per second with a 500 grain arrow. Even though I will not spend $3,500 for this crossbow, I'm not going to do it, right? I got a good job, make good money. Not going to spend my money on this. Not going to do it, right? For me, the sweet spot for prices is, uh, you know, a thousand and below is what I'd be willing to spend on a crossbow, right? Five hundred to a thousand dollars. For some people, that's too much. As this stuff moves forward, this technology trickles down, and eventually, it's affordable to everybody. There's people right now shooting 400 feet per second crossbows that cost two hundred dollars, right? And that didn't happen 15 years ago. 
this is a new thing. So that's that's what technology is. Lighter, faster, denser, cheaper. Now, enough of that. Enough of that. Let's look at this thing. We see that technology, that reverse draw, reverse limb, and to me, that is very important, and I will show you why. Right off the bat, I want to talk about this, because I think it's important when we talk about the technology. Here we have a crossbow with reverse draw, reverse limb, right? This crossbow shoots 515 feet per second. If we scroll down and we look at the TX440, We've lost 65 feet per second, but by losing 65 feet per second, what accounts for that? Essentially, they're kind of the same crossbow, right? 28 inches long, 6.5 inches wide, 6 inches wide, 29 inches longer. Same, they look very similar except for that limb design. And in fact, I'll go one step further. I will tell you that both of these crossbows have a 300 pound draw weight. Both of them. 300 pounds here on the TX440. 300 pound draw weight here on the TRX515. We have that heavier draw weight. Now that is not a problem, okay? If the limb design can accommodate that, there's plenty of crossbows out there with 300 pound draw weights. So if the limb materials can accommodate that, great. If the overall design accommodates that, great. You have to use a crank, so that kind of stinks. I don't, you know, I'm not a crank guy. The difference is this 440, 300 pound draw weight, shoots 440 with a 12 inch power stroke, okay? That's the distance from the string at rest to where the knock is uh, attaching to your trigger, that kind of thing. So that 12 inch path down the rail, the string has 12 inches to impart all of its 300 pound draw weight energy, so to speak, into that arrow and send it down range, 12 inches. With the reverse draw, reverse limb design that they have on the faster model, you have 16 inches of power stroke. The string now has 16 inches more time, a longer period of time to impart energy on that arrow. And that results in a difference of 65 feet per second. That's a big deal. Otherwise, these two crossbows are very similar. So that is a big deal. And I think the difference in price, here we're talking uh, 3,500 bucks or so, depending on the scope, that kind of thing. Here we're talking 2,000 or so, okay, for 440. That extra 65 feet per second costs an extra 1,500 bucks but probably that's because of this limb design. And it's the same amount of material, the limbs are just switched, right? The riser is just moved back so that the limbs and pulleys and cams and all that good stuff is out front. That's the only difference. It's just switched around. But by switching it around, I think this company has to pay royalties to another company, Scorpid, who designed that technology. And I think that accounts for that extra price. Pretty cool, huh? I could be wrong on that, but I do think that's overall, I'm not an intellectual property lawyer, so I don't know really all the details going on with this kind of stuff, but that's really the difference. The only difference between these two crossbows, they look very similar, don't they? If we put them side by side or switch back and forth, you can see they are almost the same crossbow, same size, same dimension, same design, except for the limbs. They both have some interesting new technology from 10 points. In fact, this is twin riser technology. Right there we have it, twin riser technology. This is something that when I saw it, I thought, man, that's pretty cool. If you look at this crossbow, this looks like every other crossbow, doesn't it? Doesn't this look like your regular crossbow? It looks just like a regular crossbow, right? We're gonna pull the trigger and the arrow's gonna go right out here, but it's not. That's not what's happening. If you look at this, this is the 515. This is the reverse draw reverse limb design. And if we look at this, the arrow, when you pull the trigger, is actually going to go this way. It's actually going to go from the back of the crossbow here down this way. The reason I know that's the case is because this is cocked and the string is back here. And you can see that string, right, going back there. Uh, when you pull the trigger, it goes down this way. So that is that reverse limb design. The cams are clear down here at the bottom of the picture. What they're pointing out here, okay, that's just to illustrate that difference in design, right? The reverse limb, when you cock it, it's gonna fling the arrow out this way. It opens up this way and throws the arrows out like that. Pretty cool. So that's the difference, just to, cause it actually came up in a recent video. People were asking me, what's the difference in those two? So the twin riser stuff, here you can see in this picture, we have twin risers, right? There's a plate on the bottom, plate on top, plate on the bottom, plate on top. And what happens is the arrow travels between those two risers, between those plates. So they're above each other and the arrow goes down in between. That's pretty cool. And I looked at it, my first thought was, why are they just doing that now, <laughs> right? You look at that and it just seems obvious. Like, why didn't you do that forever? That just seems like a great design, doesn't it? Because you've reduced a lot of the weight. You have very strong plates in there. I'm sure they're very strong, but it just looks like, man, that just was begging to be made all this time. We could have done that 10 years ago or whatever. 
I'm glad that this is out there now. That is definitely going to make a crossbow lighter, the front end lighter. And believe me, that crossbow, the front end's pretty heavy, right? The only way to make that front end on that crossbow feel less heavy is to put a really heavy scope on it like I did so that the whole thing is heavy. So it's heavy all over, right? So the whole thing is heavy. But I really like this design. To me, that just screams that that's a good design. And this is an improvement in technology. Really just kind of surprised that it didn't happen before. Guide lock arrow rest. They have new arrow setups on these things, which we'll talk about in just a second here. The trigger tech precision trigger clean and crisp breaks like glass feel to improve accuracy and precision. I don't spend nearly enough time on Death by Bungie talking about triggers. Pulling of the trigger for me on that crossbow, the OB, a 2010 Excalibur Axiom, Genevieve's crossbow Bungie Jr., an Excalibur Micro 355 suppressor, on the Scorpid Death Stalker, Bungie 3.0, and on the Enforcer, Bungie 4.0, the SWAT X1, those triggers all feel the same to me. I gotta tell you, they're all kind of the same. Now I've shot other crossbows where the triggers did not feel the same, where the triggers were not something that I was interested in. That being said, triggers, even this trigger included, this fancy new trigger that they have on here, um, to me, if you shoot it all the time and you're used to it and you know where that break is gonna be, then it's probably okay. Another thing we see on this crossbow, the zero track barrel. How cool is that? Railless design reduces weight and eliminates arrow friction, leading to straight knock travel and greater down range accuracy. Railless design, where have we heard that before? Hmm. That is a Raven spec, isn't it? That is a Raven thing. That's one of their things is railless design. This crossbow doesn't have a rail does have a barrel because it's above the foregrip there. That's what where the arrow travel takes place on a crossbow. But that barrel, uh, as, it, as the arrow's going down there, it's not rubbing against a rail. It loses friction. Raven introduced that years ago. By doing that, they have less friction, so you increase feet per second right out of the gate, right? You might gain 5, 10, 15, 25 feet per second or something just by having a railless design. Now, both of the models, okay, if we go back up the top here, the TX440 and the TRX515, both of these models have that railless design too. So they both are benefiting from that in terms of attaining their speeds. We will look over here, new AccuLock scope bridge. That's another big deal. That is another big deal. And I'll tell you why. 10 point released the 505. That crossbow had cantilever design for the scope. Well, that's about the same time that the Burris Oracle X was released. Big heavy scopes. The Garmin 0X1i, right? That was released. Those scopes are kind of heavy and sit on that cantilever design. When you fire the crossbow, that extra weight is working it up and down. So 10 point came out with scope struts which one of my criticisms was they released these scope struts that go on there to support that cantilever and give it added support on the front end, but you couldn't add them to older models. So if you bought a 505, spent 3,500 bucks on a crossbow with, and then got an expensive scope to put on it, you're stuck with one without what they are acknowledging is an important piece of their architecture. So you put this you can't just add those scope struts. So their newer models have those scope struts. This doesn't have the scope struts. I really like this. This actually just has a bridge. The Picatinny rail goes all the way down to mount your scope, the scope rail does. And then it mounts on the front of the crossbow so that when you shoot it, it's, it's reinforced all along the entire bridge of the crossbow, right? So there isn't that cantilever design where that scope is gonna flap up and down. Instead, it is attached. Now, on the enforcer here, see this has the enclosed barrel and the Picatinny rail is attached here and here all along it. So when I fire it, this thing doesn't flop up and down like that. It is instead attached to the entire barrel of the crossbow. So all that vibration is equal throughout here. You're not gonna loosen the scope or anything like that, or, or worse yet, loosen the actual scope rail, right? That sticks out there all by itself. If you ever look at the Raven designs, that's a thing. It doesn't really matter so much with your traditional scopes, your speed ring scopes, your vintage scopes. <laughs> But if you step up to a range finding scope like this, these things are pretty heavy. And some of the speed ring scopes, right? Some of those, the, the bigger they get, the better low light they are, the heavier they are. So that's a good design. I do like seeing that from 10 point. Get a sip of tea and 
Make sure my voice stays up here. New AccuSlide Max. I do like the AccuSlides. I do like 10 points cocking system. If you gotta cock a crossbow with a crank, this is a good one to cock with a crank, I guess. I guess. I am partial to rope cocking, and that's one of the reasons I still think 400 at 400 is the sweet spot for modern crossbows, because I can still rope cock the SWAT X1, for example. I really like that 195 pound draw weight. No problem, right? No problem. The Alpha Knock HPX, okay? You have to have knocks that will work with 515 feet per second, don't you? Knocks that work on a 400 feet per second crossbow might not work on a 500. Knocks that work on a 300 might not work on a 400. This isn't new, right? It isn't a reason to dislike 515 feet per second crossbows and say, I'm not getting one of those because that's too much power. That's not really fair because 10 years ago, when I was still hunting with this crossbow, right? and everybody else is shooting 400 feet per second, we're having the same problems. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm gonna stick with my 300 feet per second crossbow, these 400 feet per second crossbows, that's too much, too much power. Well, now everybody shoots a 400 feet per second crossbow. It's the, the average speed for crossbows. If you look at, at uh, Killer Instinct's website, pretty much everything they offer shoots 405, right? Like that's just, the, that's, that's what a crossbow is today. A 400 grain arrow at 405 feet per second. It's the rule of 400, like I wrote in my book, right? That's what that is. You get 0.7 slugs of momentum, you get 140 foot pounds of kinetic energy right out of the box with a stock 400 grain arrow. That's the definition of modern crossbows. It's not new, it's not exciting, but it is kind of an observation that remains true. Someday down the road, we might be talking about a 500 grain arrow going 500 feet per second. And I welcome those days. But right now, that technology really has not caught up with us at this point. You're gonna blow through targets at 515 feet per second. You're gonna have to get like the high-end targets, right? You're gonna have to have new targets. But when I went from the OB to a 400 feet per second crossbow, stepped up from 300 to 400 feet per second, I had to buy all new targets. Had to buy all new targets, right? And that's so that's not new. This isn't a new thing. It is something that we've always dealt with, not just in, it's not even unique to crossbows. That is all technology. It's all technology. If you're into music like I am, do you still listen to your cassettes? Yeah, one or two of you are out there right now putting a comment in here. Yeah, I still listen to cassettes. <laughs> okay, that's great, but most of us don't. At one time I had 100 cassettes, and then I got rid of them and I bought 100 CDs and then over time, and then I got rid of all the CDs. Then I had all the digital music that I took off the CDs and stored it on my computer, and I would listen to it that way and download it to my phone and listen to it that way. And now I just stream everything, right? Like the world changes. So crossbows aren't unique, crossbows will evolve also. So my point is the knocks that used to work 10 years ago ain't gonna work today. We have to upgrade knocks, you have to do, use new stuff. Now here, you aren't gonna be using Burt Coyote Luminox, unfortunately, so I got a little bit of a problem. I don't know if I wanna use a different knock. Not a big fan of that. And again, I'm not really looking at this crossbow anyway because it's out of my price range, both of them are, okay? But these new lighted center punch HPX knocks, when we look at this, they have this little indentation right here, okay? and right here. And what that does, now you'll notice this does not snap on the string, right? It is a crescent, not a snap on, but a crescent design. And so when you insert that down your rail, or no rail, when you insert that down there, it will ride up against the string and hold against the string. Okay, so the string's here and it's gonna go on it like this. It's not gonna snap on it. And the good thing about not snapping on is it doesn't wear down your serving, right? Every time you snap that on there, there's some abrasion. It's rubbing your serving. And then it has a snap off once it hits the end of the right rail, right? It has a snap off of that. So it's like sanding it down every time you put it on here. This doesn't do that. However, this knock design will ride up over the latch so that you feel it snap in place. It's not snapping in place on the string. It is snapping in place on the trigger box. Think of it that way, I guess. So that's pretty cool, but the knock design, it's gonna snap in place and you'll feel it when it's rested in place. The other thing I'll say about this, and we'll wrap this up with arrows, which are not talked about nearly enough, in my opinion. But these arrows, okay, these arrows 
are 0.001 that come with this crossbow. They're high-end arrows, 0.001 straightness. They are spine aligned already from the factory. That means every one of them is going to shoot the same. They're going to be coming out of the crossbow the same way with the spine in the same location. So they're not, you're not going to have a couple of flyers and a handful of shooters. You're going to have all shooters. They should shoot the same once it's sighted in. The other thing is, which is pretty cool, is they are all within one grain of each other, one grain tolerance. So they're going to weigh just about the same, as much as you can. These are high-end arrows. If I bought this crossbow, bought some of those arrows, I would only use that, right? And I think that's probably good, especially with this high-speed stuff. The reason I say we should talk about arrows more with modern, ultra-modern crossbows like these, these are ultra-modern crossbows. With these, at these speeds, aerodynamics, right? And there's two ways to say that, aerodynamics and aerodynamics. But either way, that's really important at these speeds. It's more important than ever. That crossbow right there, I slowed it down to 263 feet per second, and I can shoot anything at that speed. Aerodynamics doesn't matter anymore at that speed because it's, it's irrelevant. It's just going to, it throws everything well. I shot a woodchuck at 81 yards with that crossbow this year. Well, right. I got a clear shot. I can take that one. 81. <laughs> These speeds, the arrow is crucial. It's very important that you have your arrow designed perfectly. And 10 point takes that into account. More videos on these new crossbows come in pretty exciting times for us as crossbow hunters. Until next time, forget about all this new stuff. All hail Bungie. <laughs>